morning twitch TV specifically good morning twitch creative uh, today going to be doing some more iOS development uh, if you've been here in the past we do this a few ways uh, we will start by uh, first running through the basics of iOS programming uh, and then we will move forward into some more advanced stuff uh, once we've gotten warmed up a little bit. Um, I am getting, still getting set up a little bit here, uh, but <clears throat> I am Brent Schooley. I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. Uh, we are a developer platform that makes it super simple for you to connect all of the people you care about uh, in the apps you're already building using the tools and technologies that you already know and love. Uh, we do that a variety of ways. Uh, we have uh, phone numbers that you can buy to do things like text messaging and voice calling uh, and voice over IP calling. Um, but really excitingly, we um, have just recently launched a few SDKs uh, that you can find uh, at twilio.com. Uh, these are SDKs for uh, doing things like video chat and text-based chat. Um, so. That is some of the stuff that we will be looking at uh, later on this morning. Uh, I see we have Phil Nash joining the chat. Um, hello, Phil. How is everything sounding today? Are we okay? You got good audio coming through. I'm just uh, running through and checking on all of my setup. Make sure everything looks okay, everything sounds okay before we start doing the real stuff before the people start showing up, as it were. I see we have the second slot underneath the main screen on Twitch Creative right now. So hopefully that will that will draw some people in here. Um, that's cool. If people are looking around to come in. Uh, cool. Uh, Phil had Phil had way too much Phil had way too much volume uh, at the start. That's that's not good. That's not good. I'm glad everything's good, though. I'm glad we're, we're off to a good start. What's not good is I've got a spotlight search in the middle of the screen. I don't know why, uh, I, don't know why I was searching for something. Uh, yeah, the, the green screen... Mm, let me take a look. I want to see if I'm, if I'm satisfied with how it's screening the green right now. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually really good. That's, um, I think that's the crispest the, um, the video has looked. Um, in terms of not having a ton of grainy pixels. That's cool. Uh, we're making some progress. I have some incredibly bright lights shining right at me that are making that possible. Um, we can talk about that later. Uh, not on stream, of course, uh, but later on today. Uh, so you're not here to hear me talk about getting set up. You're probably here to learn a little bit about iOS programming, um, how to build video chat applications. Uh, the way this works, uh, and just as a little prompt, the way this works is uh, I will go through uh, some basics. So I'll go through some of the basics of iOS programming. We'll do a really quick hello world. I think I'm going to keep that to like a really, really, really quick hello world today uh, before moving on to um, our video chat application. First, I really do need to fix this camera. Uh, it is not pointing at the right angle for programming. Um, I will be here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, sorry. Uh, just a little bit of logistics from getting reset up from yesterday. Uh, so, we're going to do a really quick Hello World, and then we'll move into um, some iOS programming for Twilio video. Uh, so let's start, let's start out in Xcode um, and do our Hello World. This is just our warm-up to get moving, uh, to get everything... I don't know, to get the juices flowing, it's early here, it's 9 a.m. I know in other places, other people tuning in, it's later in the day, but I have just woken up about uh, 30 minutes ago, uh, maybe maybe an hour ago. I guess it was more like an hour ago. I've, w I've been awake for an hour, and uh, I need to get some basic programming out of the way before I can get into the more complicated stuff. Otherwise, we'll all mess up. Uh, and I think it's good to uh, bring some of the newcomers on board to learn a little bit about programming uh, before we start doing some more advanced stuff. Sound like a good plan? If it sounds like a good plan, let me know in the chat. We've got uh, Phil 
and Marcos in the chat. Phil and Marcos are also developer evangelists from Twilio, uh, and they are here to help me in the chat. Uh, so we'll create a new Xcode project. Uh, and when you create a new Xcode project, you're going to have um, a variety of different templates to choose from. Um, and these templates uh, allow you to uh, tailor the beginning, the starting point of your application uh, for what it is that you're building. So I like to go through these every time, um, and I'll actually go through the different categories because I've got the resolution set today uh, so that it's easy to see what we're working with. Uh, you can actually read stuff. Is there a way to use it on OS 10, 10.7? Uh, so you can use Xcode on OS 10, 10.7, but it'll be a previous version of Xcode. Uh, so it might not be exactly what you're gonna see here. Um, I can't remember, uh, that might be Xcode five. So that's gonna be quite a bit back. That's either Xcode five or six. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be farther back. It's gonna only support an earlier version of OS 10 and it's only gonna support an earlier version of uh, iOS. Uh, but a lot of the things that I'll show will still be the same. Uh, you won't be able to use Swift though. I'm pretty sure that's too far back for Swift. Um, anyways, the uh, category, the templates that we can choose from. Uh, we have master detail. Uh, so this is a list driven. So we've got a list of things and we pick one and it's going to show some detail about that item. Uh, that's many applications in iOS uh, that uses a table view to, to move through the items. Page based, you don't see this one very often. Um, it, it's an old kind of leftover template from the Earlier days of iOS, the weather application used to be this thing that you'd, I guess you still do flip through um, pages in the weather application. So that is still a page, page based application. Um, these are more for your utility type applications where you have different screens that you want to page through. Uh, then you have the single view application, which is where we're going to start. Uh, this gives you just a single view controller. Uh, single view controller to work with. Uh, you can add more, but you're gonna start with just one. That'll give you one class and one interface uh, to, to work with. Tabbed application, if you've seen the iOS applications with the tabs at the bottom, that's this one. Uh, and then game, game is really cool. Maybe we'll do that at some point if I ever get my gaming chops down. Uh, game is for sprite kit and scene kit games. So sprite kit is for 2D games and scene kit is for 3D games. You can use the two together. Uh, and then Apple just released at the last WWDC a thing called uh, Game Kit. It has a bunch of, um, has a bunch of APIs and uh, algorithms that you can use just out of the box to do really cool stuff. Uh, frameworks and libraries. This is when you want to create a library of code to give to somebody else. Uh, you would use a framework these days. Uh, watch, there's just one. Um, iOS app with WatchKit app uh, that sounds exactly like it, it does exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, a starting point for an iOS app if you're gonna have a watch app with it. It gives you a lot of boilerplate. Uh, and then same thing with watch framework. That's for if you wanted to create a, a framework that people could use when they're building watch apps. Uh, TVOS, there's a bunch of different things here. There's game if you're building a TV game, there's app if you're building a single view application, and there's tab if you're doing a tabbed TV application. So these are, these are for the new Apple TV. Um, and then OS 10 has uh, Cocoa application, command line tool, and game. Pretty basic. Um, there's also system plugins. <laughs> if you want to get into this land, this is some really fun stuff here. This is where if you're creating a preference pane or uh, like an automator action, uh, this is where you would come to build those. A um, lot of cool stuff in here. I haven't actually played with uh, building any of these things, but there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do here. Uh, we're going to do a single view application, and this is going to be our classic Hello World uh, this is going to be Twitch, Creative, uh, pfft, March, because I haven't made that yet, and I haven't gone back and cleaned up these projects yet, uh, something I need to do later. Uh, so we are going to create a very basic Hello World, uh, and this Hello World is going to do one basic thing. We are going to create a label, and we are going to create a button, and when we press the button, it's going to change the label to say, Hello, Twitch Creative. Uh, very, very basic things, but it allows us to, to look at a lot of uh, different aspects of how programming in Xcode, uh, specifically with um, specifically with Swift and iOS works. I don't know why I have now lost, I don't know why that, oh, okay. I don't know why that resized anyways. What is that even doing? Uh, let's not worry about that. Uh, let's hop straight into 
our view controller. So as you see here, we have a view controller. Zoom is going to be a bit of an issue in this resolution. That's fine, actually. We usually have the opposite problem, and I sit here and have to uh, do zooming in so that you can actually see things that are going on. Uh, we won't be doing that today. What we're going to be doing uh, is we're going to create that label, and you'll be able to see everything that's going on without me having to zoom in. A variably sized amount of static text. Uh, and if you just click on it, it gives you this popover that tells you even more things, like you can control the font and the text color and the alignment and all these sorts of things. We don't care about any of that right now. All we care about is placing this out here in the, roughly the center of the screen. Uh, and that will do. Uh, we are going to then drag a button out here. We can just search for button down in the search box at the bottom. Oh, I guess I hit enter. That's not cool. Uh, you can either drag it out or you can hit enter and it'll just drop it right on the screen. Uh, I don't recommend that. Uh, we can double click on the button and change it to say hello uh, to Twitch creative. So you can see you can create a really long button. Uh, you can also create uh, buttons that use images instead of text. We'll do that later uh, when we move on uh, to the video application. I'll actually show you how to create some cool looking buttons. Uh, but that's that's all we need for now. Uh, and that's cool. If we run the application, uh, we can see what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to run that in a simulator for now. Uh, we can see we should get this label and this button centered uh, right up on the screen. And that'll be great. And then we can move on. Um, so we'll just wait for the simulator to fire up. We'll load it here. Oh, uh, well, that's unfortunate. Um, so what has happened here? Well, the labels chucked off the screen and the buttons chucked off the screen and that's probably not what you expected when you looked at this. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, this is Interface Builder showing us where it, where we wanted the control to be. Um, but where we want the control to be and where our application thinks the control should be uh, don't necessarily align because we haven't explicitly told it where the controls should be. We tell it where the explicit controls should be uh, by specifying auto layout constraints. And we can create those a bunch of different ways. Um, one thing we could do is I believe we can say, uh, where is that one option? There's one that's create constraints from current uh, that is in, I think Phil knows. It's in this one, right? No. Add missing constraints. Yeah. If I say add missing constraints, it'll, it'll create some constraints and, uh, <laughs> it's not the ones that I want. That's the problem with this thing. Um, that's why I don't ever use it really. That's why I don't remember where it is. It creates a lot of extra constraints that I didn't really want. Um, that's not ideal. So I'm going to delete all of these because it created some height constraints that I don't want, create some top space constraints I don't want, this align to center I don't want, this bottom space I don't want. So we're back to square one. We don't have any constraints. That's not cool. Um, so let's, let's make them. Uh, we can do this in the visual way. Uh, we will control drag to the top. We'll say that we want vertical spacing to top layout guide. So that'll keep this spacing, uh, 71 in this case. Let's change that to 60. We're in the uh, size inspector, this guy that looks like a ruler. Uh, we'll say that we want that to be 60. You'll notice we got this orange line now. Uh, we can resolve that by selecting the label and coming down to the square uh, Star Wars ship, or not the square, the, the triangle Star Wars strip down, ship down here and uh, say update frames. Uh, and now it's way over here on the left because we haven't specified where it should live in horizontal space. We could actually see that in this scene view uh, if we click on this red little uh, arrow here, which will show us that we are missing um, we are missing X position constraints for this label. Uh, we're also missing X and Y uh, for the button, but we knew that already. Uh, what we can do with this one is just control drag to the center of the screen, uh, the center of the view. You'll notice that the view is highlighted. That means we're going to create a constraint based on the view. 
Uh, and we let go right in the center and we can say center horizontally in container. And then we can once again resolve that frame issue. So this one makes it a little easier to see. Since we've specified correctly uh, the horizontal, the X and the Y position, Xcode now knows where it should place this label confidently. Uh, but we've placed it over here and Xcode says it should be over here. Uh, and that's true, it should be over here. Uh, so we'll do that update frames again. There is a key command for that, but I just wanna keep showing you where it is. Uh, we say update frames and now the label is positioned where we want it to be. It's centered horizontally and it's a certain distance from the top and we're good to go. Uh, let's do something similar for the button. For the button, we want uh, centered horizontally in container and we want it to maintain its distance from the label. So we'll control drag from the button to the label, let it go and say vertical spacing. And that's all we need for those two. The button will stay centered like the label does uh, and it'll stay that little bit of distance, uh, the exact distance being hmm, 19.5, not ideal. Uh, I'll change that to 20. Actually, 20 is getting was getting rounded. So we'll change it to 20, that's good. So it'll stay 20 away from the label at all times regardless of orientation and the like. Uh, to show that in action, uh, we'll go to what's called the assistant editor and we'll set the assistant editor to um, preview. So the assistant editor allows us to see uh, two files side by side that have some relation to each other, or maybe not because you can set it to whatever you want. This is kind of like your split pane uh, deal. We can set this to preview uh, if we set it to automatic like it is by default, uh, it's going to show us the uh, code file that corresponds with the view controller that we're looking at uh, inside of the interface builder. If we change this to preview, we get to see what our application looks like on an actual device. Uh, in this case, it's a four inch iPhone. So something in the iPhone 5 class, uh, let's zoom out a little bit and we can rotate it and we can see that when it goes to landscape, we still keep the same distance between the controls, keep the same distance from the top. Uh, if you're curious about what this is gonna look like on a larger iPhone, you can add one and take a look at that. Uh, you can have one that's in landscape and one that's in portrait if you wanna see those side by side, uh, if that's important to your UI, which it probably is. Uh, this is a way to see a bunch of different devices side by side uh, of all varying uh, sizes to see um, different orientations to see what your application is going to look like uh, on the different types of iOS that is on the market. Uh, so we'll go back to uh, just looking at a single file for now. Uh, actually, no, we won't. We need to take a look at this view controller file. Uh, this is the code file that represents our uh, view controller that we've been looking at, our screen that holds the label and the button. Uh, this is where we have all the ability to do things programmatically for our view. And right now we can't really do much of anything with the controls that we've drawn. So we've got a label and we've got a button, but we have absolutely no way to access them at runtime. Um, and we need to improve that situation real quickly. Uh, and the way we do that is with our favorite friend, control drag. <laughs> so we go to uh, the assistant editor and we put it back into automatic. Uh, pro tip from Matt McKay, you can actually open a new window and use the preview uh, in, an, in, a, in its own window so that you always have it available. That was a pretty good pro tip. Um, I like that pro tip a lot. <clears throat> uh, so what we need to do to get access to these from code is to do control drag. Uh, I'm going to first control drag from the label to where I would like to create properties in my class, which is just inside the class declaration. And I'm gonna call this one hello label. Uh, and then, so that that's it for that. Now I have access to the label from code. Uh, and then I wanna do something similar uh, with the button, except instead of creating an outlet, I'm gonna create what's called an action. So if I control drag down here and say create an action, uh, this action is going to fire when the user taps the button. Uh, they press down inside of it and they touch their touch leaves while they're still inside the button. Uh, and we'll call this say hello. And that's just going to create a function uh, that'll get called when the button's tapped. If you're curious about what other types of events you can create code for, uh, you can right click on the button or control click on the button since that also right clicks on the Mac and you'll get this pop up and you can drag from any of these. So if you wanted to do something 
uh, if the person is holding down the button, you want to touch down repeat. Uh, you can drag from this little empty dot here to the code, uh, and that'll create an action based on the touch down repeat event. And we can say, um, maybe this is a volume button. So we can say, uh, you know, increase volume repeat or something like that. Uh, and that's going to give us the ability to see that the user has held the button down so we could keep incrementing a counter or something like that. Uh, and you can remove these if you don't want them by just hitting this X and they go away. And I can close this right there and delete this out of our code because we're not actually going to use it. Uh, but you could do you could do a variety of things. You could say, say the person keeps the button pressed down. It's going to continue to repeatedly call that function. We could keep generating confetti and then Phil would be happy. Um, we may, might be able to talk about uh, SA confetti view later, but probably not because we're going to do video, not chat. Uh, but anyways, you could do things like confetti. Now Phil's real happy. What we want to do now is in our say hello function, uh, we want to set the text of hello label uh, equal to hello twitch creative like so uh, and we'll blank out the label by default so that it doesn't have any text of course xcode's like it's not there anymore like now it's drawing that orange box again um, we don't care uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna show up until we actually have text in it I think if we run this now we should get what we wanted the first time uh, we should end up with uh, we should end up with a label that's centered, a button that's centered, and uh, when we tap this button, uh, we should get Hello Twitch Creative. And we do. So everything is working as intended. And that's our Hello World. Um, I'm going to devote probably the rest of this time. Um, in, in previous broadcasts I've done, uh, I've done at this point a table view. I guess I guess it kind of works to explain the table view a little bit. We're not going to use a table view though, so I kind of hesitate to do that. I think we're going to launch straight into Twilio Video from here. Uh, and Twilio Video, you can find at, uh, you can you do a toggle, show and hide the text? Yeah, sure. Um, so we would need, um, we would need the button to have text, or the label to have text again. Uh, Here's some text. So the basics for, oh, wow, it's out of place again. Um, the basics for how you would probably do a toggle uh, is to create a Boolean. Uh, 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 so this would be a, what is the problem? Uh, mm -mm. Var. Um, we need to create a var uh, text visible uh, that is a bool, and it'll be equal to true by default. So we would need, what we need a boolean for, uh, for the new programmers, uh, is a value to hold whether things are visible or not. Um, we could also probably store this, there's a property in the button um, that's called a tag. Um, that's another way we could do this. I guess if we're going to go down the train of learning some things, uh, if we pick this button and we take a look at its properties on the attribute screen. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Conditionals are cool. Um, conditionals are cool in Swift too. So um, always cool to see these things. I think the tag can only, what can tag hold? This I don't know. I think tag can only hold a number so that we could use zero and one, but that's kind of wonky. Um, we'll actually use a real Boolean. What I'm gonna do is bring another button out here, um, specify its constraints quickly, center horizontally, uh, keep its distance vertically to this button uh, and change it to um, show, uh, show, no, it's gonna be hide text by default, hide text. Right, so we have a button now that says hide text by default. When we click it, it'll hide the label when, and it'll also change the text of the button to show text. Uh, so for that to work, we need a few things. We need, first, we need to actually create an outlet for this button. Uh, last time we only created an action because we only care about it being tapped. This time, if we're gonna change the button's text, we need a property to represent the button at runtime so that we can access its text. So this is the um, hide text button. 
Uh, so we'll have access to that. And then we have this uh, text visible property uh, that is a Boolean that's uh, set to true by default. Uh, and now we need that button's action. Uh, we could do that in code since we have a property for it. I'm just going to wire up the action uh, the way we did before from Interface Builder. Oops, not Outlet Collection. We need an action. Uh, and this is uh, hide text. Okay. And then inside of here, uh, we will say if uh, text visible, like so, uh, and else. So if text visible, this code runs. Uh, otherwise, this code runs. Uh, and in here, we will do. Um, should we make it? Should we make it fade? I think we should make it fade. Uh, let's make it fade. Uh, if it's visible, we'll do. Since we're since we're gonna continue down the the hello world, we might as well make it interesting. Uh, animate with duration is the one that we're looking for. We want to animate with duration with no completion handler, if I can find that. Um, we'll just get rid of the completion handler. I think this is the one that I want, right here. Animate with duration, we'll make the duration uh, 7 tenths of a second, uh, and then we'll run some animations. So the animations that we will do, we will do the um, hello label dot alpha equal to 0, 0.0. So this is going to run this block of code. Um, what is the problem? Oh, I need self because this is inside of the block. Uh, self dot hello label dot alpha equals 0, 0. Uh, under. So we're calling UI view animate with duration uh, over seven tenths of a second. Uh, whatever's in this animation block will run. Uh, and in this case, we're setting changing the alpha, uh, which is the transparency level. Uh, fully fully visible is 1.0. Um, fully transparent is 0.0. .0. So what this is going to do is it's going to fade the label out. Uh, so that's cool. And then so that it can't be interacted with um, after it's after it disappears, um, we will um, also set it. Uh, we will also set self dot hello label dot hidden uh, equal to true. This will make it completely hidden so that it's not uh, visible on screen anymore. Uh, and then. In our toggle, so when it's uh, invisible and we want to go, um, when we want when it's invisible and we want it to go back to visible, we'll reverse these operations. So we'll first set it um, to be unhidden, and then we'll do the animation. So the reason we waited until the end to hide it is because if we hid it right away, uh, then there wouldn't be any animation. This is my tankard of water, by the way. Uh, if you were in the stream yesterday, I completely ran out of water midstream. Uh, that was not cool. That's not going to happen today. And if it does, I'll be well hydrated. Uh, in this, this case, we want to hide uh, the label first. Oh, wait, no. We want to show the label first, uh, set it to not be hidden anymore, and then animate it in. Uh, but it actually won't show since the alpha will be set to zero um, until we fade it back in. So animate with duration. We're going to be using this uh, this animation later when we get to the video application. So I'm just giving you a bit of a preview. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, so for this one, we want to do hello label dot alpha uh, equals one dot zero. And with that in place, we should have a pretty good toggle. So just to recap on this function, since it's a little more complicated than what we did before, uh, we are checking to see if the text is currently showing. Uh, and if it is, then we fade it out and hide it. Uh, and once again, just this property right here, um, it determines whether the view is hidden or not. So uh, basically a hidden view is not there. It doesn't receive input events. Uh, it's just completely out of view. If we just hit it, it would receive input event. Uh, so we got to get it out of the view. So we're, we're animating it out and then hiding it. Uh, and if it uh, is not visible, then we are um, making it unhidden and then animating it back into view. Uh, so that's what that's what that function is doing, and that's what's hooked up to that hide text button. So now we're going to start off with some text that says "Here's some text." When we click "Say Hello to Twitch Creative," uh, it changes to "Hello Twitch Creative." And now, if we press the hide text button, oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't do something in here before before we do this. We can actually see it. I can say hide text, but now it doesn't say show text anymore. Uh, so that's not good. 
Um, oh, you know what? I think I want to do this in the completion block. Uh, that's a bug. So let's get rid of this. Uh, we actually need to do... You notice it... it um, I can't make it show now. Uh, but it, it disappeared Im immediately. Uh, and that's what I was talking about with wanting to be careful about when we hit it. Um, I actually made that mistake uh, without realizing it. What we need is a completion block. So we'll animate over uh, 7 tenths of a second. We'll still do the same thing we were doing before, which is to animate the alpha uh, to 0, 0.0. But we also need a completion block at the end. Uh, and this is, this is code that'll run uh, when the animation is done. Uh, and when the animation is done, then we want to set uh, the label to hidden. Uh, that equals true. And then that's also where we can do uh, self dot, uh, what is it, hide, hide text button dot text, or what is it, dot label. What is it? What is the property for text on this guy? Uh, uh, uh. I think it's dot set title. Okay, set title for state. Uh, set title, the title for the button will be uh, show text for state uh, dot normal. So very boring, uh, very boring this. Um, this is just the button's normal state. So not for the pressed down state, not for the hovered state, not any of that stuff, uh, just the straight up uh, normal state for the button. Uh, and that's that's all we'll work with here. Um, but this basically does what I thought I had programmed before, uh, which is animate and then set the but label to hidden and change the text on the button to show text so we can toggle it back. Uh, we don't need a completion block here, uh, but we do need um, after the animation is done or during the animation, it doesn't really matter. In this case, we need to set the uh, title for this button, for the same button, to uh, back to hide text and for state.normal. So, Phil wanted conditionals. I said, let's do animations. Um, it's a good tag team. Let's see if it works this time, though. All right, so we've got some text. Change it to Hello Twitch Creative. Hide it. It's a nice subtle fade. Got a button and now it says show text. Comes back. Maybe. 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 Oh no. Um, why not? Oh, I didn't change text visible. Catch me in the chat. Catch me in the chat. Catch me in the chat. Um, yeah. So we have another bug. Text visible. It's false. Text visible equals true. If I got to change the flag, obviously it's not going to work. It worked the first time, uh, but we are always going to fall into that one conditional. It's so easy to make these mistakes live. All right, show text. There we go. Now we've got that nice toggle effect going on. Uh, and we've got that nice subtle fade. So we learned a bit about uh, UI view animations. Um, animate with duration and also uh, running some completion handlers uh, when we're done. So, uh, as it says in this project description, uh, I have gone through the basics of iOS programming. I've done a Hello World that included some new features like it always does. Uh, this time we imp implemented some uh, UI view animation. Uh, with that done, we I think we are more than ready to move on to uh, creating a video application with Twilio Video. Uh, if you're enjoying the stream so far, uh, please click the little heart to follow uh, so that you'll know the next time I'm live. I do this at least once a week on Wednesday mornings. Um, but we're going to move on to Twilio Video. Twilio Video uh, it can be found at twilio.com slash video <clears throat> is a cross-platform SDK for creating multi-party video com conversations. Uh, I say cross-platform. This will work uh, in on JavaScript in your browser. We'll see that pretty soon. Uh, it works in iOS, uh, either from Objective-C or Swift, which we are going to have hands-on direct programming uh, experience with today. Uh, and it also works on Android if that is your flavor of choice. Um, I like to I like to use and work in both, so I won't cast any judgment. Uh, where we're going to start, 
uh, is from Twilio.com. Uh, Twilio.com slash docs slash API slash video. Uh, and if you go there, uh, you'll land on this page. And from this page, uh, we are going to click on get started on iOS. Let's see, do I still have, oh, I need to kill that. I don't want that. Um, we f can get started with the quick start. The quick start is intended uh, to get you up and running uh, with Twilio video uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, it's not necessarily showing all of the best practices, but it is the quickest way to get you from, uh, I don't have anything on screen, I don't have any code written, uh, up to I am making a video chat call from my iPhone uh, to my browser. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Uh, what you would want to start with is a uh, free account at uh, twilio.com slash try twilio. Uh, from there, you can sign up for a free Twilio account. Uh, and that'll allow you to uh, get all of these values that it's going to tell you that you need. So you need to create a configuration profile. Uh, this is where you configure your, um, your video instance. This is where your web hooks are and all the options for video. Uh, you need one of those. Uh, you also need this for your uh, token generator application. Uh, then you'll have an account SID, an API key, and an API secret. These are all things that are really easy to set up. I already have them, and I also don't want to leak any credentials, so I'm not going to show how this works. But you can click these links, and it'll be really easy to get those set up. You need these four values uh, for the server application. So we're going to need um, we're going to need a server application to work along with our iOS application. Uh, and there's a guide here, uh, right in this quick start, that'll show you. Uh, what they're doing in that server, we're not gonna we're not gonna spend a lot of time looking at it here. But what it's basically doing is it's vending tokens. Uh, you can think of these as passes. We're building a video chat club, and it's members only. Uh, and the only way you're going to be allowed to do uh, video chat is if you have one of these passes. Uh, so this server is handing out the passes based on incoming requests from your iOS application. So we need to have something running that can do that. Uh, I already have this running, or not running, I already have this on my local machine. Uh, and we can get there pretty quickly. It's projects, Twilio, uh, quick start servers. And I have the video PHP server uh, in this folder. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on here. There's just some PHP files. That config.php is the one that has those four credentials that it told you to go snag. Um, and then there's uh, this token generator PHP file that has a bunch of PHP that, I mean, I don't write PHP, but it's pretty simple stuff. It, uh, it basically generates a random name. It gets an access token. So we get a random username. Uh, we generate an access token based on our credentials. Uh, we give it some grants to say that it can, it can do video. It's allowed to do video. Um, we add that grant and we turn, return it back out as a JSON web token or JOT. I don't, I, I don't know how we like come to pronounce these things. JWT is JOT. I'm guessing someone is inserting the, the A from JSON, even though there's no A in it and doing J-A-W-T or something like that. I don't know, uh, but that's a JOT. Uh, and it's basically a JSON web token that contains all the information about um, your identity for Twilio video and uh, your identity for the token that's been granted to you and uh, <clears throat> all that stuff. So we get that back from this server in our iOS application and then we can create the Twilio video client uh, to get connected up. Yes, it is very Philly. Uh, this is like John basically, except it's got a T on the end of it. How about that? Uh, cool, so this is what's gonna give, give us our token back from the server. We just need to run this thing and the steps for how to run it are right here php-s localhost port 8000. So we'll do that. Uh, php-s localhost port 8000. Cool, now there's a server running uh, locally on port 8000. Surely the rest of you on the internet can connect to that, right? Uh, no. And in fact, neither could my iPhone if it wasn't on my local network. So that presents, that presents an initial problem for us. Uh, it's great for local development. We would probably be able to do a lot of things with that. In fact, we could go over to Firefox here, create a new window, and we could go to uh, 
local host port 8000 and that would be cool that would actually take me to this site and we could see that things are, are working uh, we're connected to Twilio we're listening for incoming invites um, as as a random username so this is uh, adjective name place essentially uh, Tadri Anna Essex uh, we can test to see if local local video is working this is where you get more of me on screen than you actually want for a bit uh, we'll do share selected screens and then I show up right there there's more of me on screen uh, in fact I suppose there are now two and I can look over at that other one uh, it's, it's way over there it's just wait that way uh, cool so there's there's more of me on screen uh, and we're gonna create even more of me on screen very soon once we have our iOS application working I could create another instance of the browser like so and put these side by side throw that one over to the right throw this one over to the left and uh, green green screen yeah right you can see the magic back here look there's the green screen um, cool uh, localhost uh, port 8000 again and we can preview another one over here actually I don't have another camera how's this gonna work this should be interesting say FaceTime camera from that one. Oh, it's going to take that as the source too. We're good. Uh, and then what did we say this was? This was uh, Tadri Anna Essex. Let's just copy that. You can see how this works in the browser real quick. Obviously because of the resolution it's crunched in, but if I send the invite over say share selected devices. Wow, so many me. Wow. Look at those guys up there, man. Look. Look. Ah. Yeah, that was the worst weatherman ever. But anyways, there's a bunch of me over in that corner. Um, yeah, so now that, now you can see Twilio video working. It's, it's working so much that there are way too many of me in browsers right now. Uh, <laughs> demoing video is hilarious. Okay, we're only going to want one Firefox browser for the rest of this. Uh, and we'll just kind of resize it so it doesn't look completely janky. Uh, because we're going to do the rest of this from iOS. Uh, now we've seen how Twilio video works. We've seen how quickly we could go from having nothing to having like five of me on screen. Uh, now we need to figure out how to do this from iOS. Uh, and one thing that we want to do right away, um, I think it would be kind of cool if, um, if I was actually able to talk to somebody more than just myself. Uh, and to make that happen, I need to make this server accessible um, from the public internet. And we do that with a thing called ngrok. Ngrok creates an HTTP tunnel on a port that I specify at a subdomain that I specify by optional configuration. Uh, and I want to create something called brent.ngrok.io. I need to update my Ngrok. Uh, but anyways, we won't do that right now because we're in the middle of a broadcast and that's just poor form. Uh, Ngrok.com, like I said, that makes uh, tunneling to localhost 8000 over this URL uh, work. So, uh, Phil, why don't you, uh, why don't you go to brent.ngrok.io and, uh, send me your username. Try connecting to somebody else for a change. Make sure that it's really working out to the internet before uh, we do any more local programming. I guess you could even just send an invite to what you see on screen. Phil is going now. Yeah, this is the, the magic of the, the stream delay, uh, just so you can see things working locally. Uh, okay, cool. We got uh, Nasty Penny Minneapolis. Could have could have gotten an easier one to type, don't you think? Uh, <laughs> I'll send that invite out. I'll share my FaceTime with no audio. We'll see if we get Phil. Invite sent. <laughs> Come on, Phil. Phil's in London, uh, and Phil's going to connect, and that's going to be quite a round trip, all things considered, uh, especially with stream delay. Hopefully things are working. Are we getting... Phil get a token? Oh, no. Did Phil try to connect to me? Oh, no. We got unable to create conversation. I'm just going to I'm just gonna re redo this. I'll do a refresh. It's cool. I'm sending another... Ah, I don't know. Now it's now it's now it's janked. Let's let's get synced back up. I'm gonna start the process on the uh, the iOS download here, um, so that we can keep things rolling while Phil gets loaded up. Phil will let me know when when he's ready, 
uh, and then we'll, we'll sync this up correctly. Phil's got a new name. Okay. Phil will send me a new name. Uh, we'll keep moving with the iOS application. So we want uh, the Swift Quick Start. Uh, and I could click this and it would download it, but I actually want to do this um, in a GitHub repo locally. So I am going to copy the link and uh, I'm going to paste it and get rid of master.zip. <clears throat> Go all the way back out to here. Phil has given me a new username. So let's, uh, let's try to connect to Phil uh, in our video application before we continue on. Uh, so we have eccentric Owen Quantico, send the invite, share the devices. That should send an invite out to Phil, who hopefully will be able to connect this time. One can hope. This makes for a much... Oh, Phil's got, Phil's got permission issues in Chrome. Um, oh wait, here we go, here we go. Here we go, is that gonna be Phil? Are we gonna have Phil? I don't see Phil's video. But I think we have connected. We have connected to a Callus Penny Portland, uh, so that's good. We have we have nothing coming from that person, but uh, that that shows that I'm able to connect to somebody else. That's cool. Uh, will it be possible to add a function to use the green screen re green screen replacement on the video app? Just curiosity. Uh, yeah, so you can do that. You can do that a couple ways. Um, there are a few uh, different things you can do to make that happen. Um, uh, this WS is null. Uh, funny thing that I send you an invite. Yeah, well, hey, I'm, hey, people are participating. Um, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> you guys are great. Uh, you're going to cause problems later, but that's fine. I'll just, I'll just hide. Let's see. What can I do? No, nah, I'm not going to hide it. It's fine. Um, I'll just keep it closed when I'm not ready to use it. It's cool because I know I know people will troll. Uh, I know you guys wouldn't troll, but we, somebody might troll at some point. Uh, your camera was closed. That's cool. Uh, well, thanks for thanks for participating there, uh, Implete. Um, glad you're glad you're having fun. Um, it worked. Uh, it worked. That was good. Um, okay, so we want to grab this video quick start. Uh, this has all the information, uh, just like before, uh, that we need to set up for this to work, um, but. Uh, what we're going to want to do is actually just clone this locally. Uh, you can do green screen and browsers using Canvas. Yes, uh, Phil is right. Phil is Phil is right. Um, so we are going to go to our uh, projects directory here, and I'm going to create a new prod a new directory called Twitch Streams, uh, and we'll go into that. All right, and here's where we'll clone. So we'll get clone uh, the quick start into a repo called um, Twitch Twilio video, like so. And then we will grab, we will do um, git commit, Initial commit. I guess I don't really need this um, before features since there's already a repo there. We don't really need to do that. Um, and then I'm going to add this remote and push this up to my repo. Oh no. Ref spec master. Oh no, what did I do? Oh, because, okay. Um, Help, Phil. There's already a remote in here, right? Get remote. No. Why? Why would the ref spec be wrong? Um, anyways, I'm not going to belabor that point. I do want you to be able to keep up, but um, push an existing. Um, that should have... I gotta force it or something. The ref spec that's in there from the... Uh, using Z shell, what's the point of it? Um, I like some of the features that Z shell has um, easier tab completion. I don't know why I'm getting this ref spec issue. Um, source ref spec master doesn't match any. There's no branch. Did I screw that? Oh, you know what? I did. I didn't do the dash U. There's the bug. No, actually, that it's not the issue. What is this ref spec deal?
source ref spec does not match any stack overflow. Get clone, get add. Never committed. No, but we did a commit. Um, I don't think that's it. I don't. Uh, what did I do? Oh, we're in Badland. What is even. Okay, let's try. Let's try now. We're in. We're in bad territory. No, that's not the error. I don't know. Uh, we're just not going to use git right now. I, having a git fail, that's the worst imaginable thing right now. It's it's this. Uh, ref spec master doesn't match any. Um, source ref spec master doesn't match any. Failed to push some refs. Yeah, I've gh pages. Oh, um, shouldn't be. Oh, wait. You know what happened? <sighs> I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna annotate this uh, with verbals. Uh, I'm not gonna annotate it with verbals. You can read the screen. Um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you can just you can just read what's going on. It's fine. We'll just add this remote correctly this time. Uh, Origin already exists. Um. La 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 la. We're in the weeds. We'll just keep chopping the weeds. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'm going to mess that up later too. Uh, uh, GitHub master. Oh, come on. <laughs> now I don't now I don't have my credentials correct. Um I'm I'm, I'm done with git right now. I'm just done with git right now. Uh we, it's not going to matter. There's there's not going to be a repo for this broadcast. Uh, I just don't want to be in the weeds anymore. We're, we're done with the weeds. Uh, we are totally done with the weeds. Uh, instead of that, what we're going to do is we are going to install uh, the Cocoa Pods. Cocoa Pods. What are Cocoa Pods? Cocoa Pods uh, is the dependency manager, uh, one dependency manager for iOS and Mac development both for uh, Swift and Objective-C. This is your dependency manager, uh, one dependency manager that you could use uh, to manage your dependencies. Uh, and we use it, um, we use it to uh, get our Twilio, uh, Twilio guys. Uh, yeah, I do have an SSH key. Um, it is not working right now in Z shell for some reason. I don't exactly know why um i don't want to debug that right now um because that should be working that was working before um that's that's not i'm gonna run out of time if i if i do that uh was i using https instead of git oh you know what yeah that could do it um let's try that That's probably not going to work either, but I'm willing to try like a few more things. Git. Um, we'll add foo. Uh, git push. Uh, foo master. Mm, no, I can't push to that. Uh, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with that. Um, I'm totally done with that. Let's manage our dependencies. So we've got Twilio Common and Twilio Conversations Client. Uh, Twilio Common, uh, what, where did these come from actually? Should we take a look at that real quick? So in this directory, we have something called a pod file. Uh, and if we cat the pod file, we can take a look at what it had in it. Uh, it's basically saying uh, that there is, yeah, we'll stream all about Git another time. Yeah, I, I just, mm. uh, so source, uh, CocoaPod specs off of Twilio's GitHub. Uh, so that's saying, uh, look for these dependencies in a 
GitHub repo underneath Twilio. Uh, and the pod that we are looking for is Twilio Conversations client. And uh, we're looking for version 0 0.21.0. Uh, there is, I believe, a newer version of that coming soon. Uh, but 0 0.21.0 is what we'll use today. Uh, we ran pod install. I'll run it again because it won't do anything, but we can see that it has that dependency law loaded up. Uh, and it also created this XC workspace uh, that will now open up. Uh, video quick start XC workspace. Cool. Uh, so this time instead of a uh, instead of a project, uh, we have a workspace which contains two projects. Uh, one is pods, and this is where our pod file that we were just looking at got moved to. Uh, and this project up here is all of the rest of our code. So we have source files and we have storyboards. Uh, the first thing that we need to change, uh, well, first we'll take a look at this uh, storyboard. Um, so we've got a navigation controller, which is giving us a nav bar at the top. Uh, and then we have this uh, video UI screen. Uh, this big black box is where the remote participants video will go. Uh, and this gray box in the bottom left is where our local video will go. Uh, and this text down here, these are the things that we're going to, um, we're going to change first, I think. Um, this logging in text is going to show... Um, yeah, yeah, git at github.com uh, name repo dot git. Yeah, we could try that. I just want to keep moving because we're going to we're going to run out of time because I know how much time this is going to. Um, yeah, this is this is going to take a while. Um, how would that? Yeah, not going to not going to deal with that for now. Um, logging in label. Um, yep, logging in label. Uh, this is going to change to the username once it gets rolling. Uh, and this hang up button that's text currently, we're going to want to make that a, a an image button. I think that's a much better thing to look at. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to move this label um, to the prompt of the nav bar up top. Um, but let's let's take a look at what this looks like before we start talking about improvements. Um, let me I'm going to run this on a local device. Uh, and first things first. Going to switch screens. Uh, okay, and to show you my local device, I'm going to use QuickTime. I'm going to use QuickTime to do a new movie recording. And I will pick my phone as the camera. And we'll get my phone. Cool. Uh, that's awesome. So that's going to show you my local phone. We'll run the video off of my local phone. Uh, and then we'll connect my phone to the browser. And that'll be cool. Uh, neat. And it's already set up to build and run on my local phone instead of a simulator, which is exactly what we want. Uh, before we do any of that, let's take a look at this view controller that we're going to be working with. Uh, we've been working with tokens. We've been talking about tokens coming off that PHP server. And here's where we have the option to, to fetch that. Now, if you're working with the testing tools, uh, you could generate a token manually and bring it in here and just paste it in this spot. Um, we're going to fetch it from our server since we have that. Uh, and that is going to be HTTPS. Uh, what is Twilio? So Twilio, Twilio is a developer platform uh, for connecting users uh, using the tools that you are building, uh, using the tools and languages that you already know in the apps that you're building. In this case, Twilio is the API that powers the video chat. Uh, so you can go to twilio.com uh, and create a free account. Uh, and you can go to twilio.com slash video to learn more about Twilio video. Uh, so that is the API that is behind uh, the video uh, that we're going to be building. Uh, and so that's, that is all of that uh, for Twilio. Uh, we are going to grab our token we are going to grab our token from brent.ngrok.io using an HTTPS uh, URL, uh, which is required if you are, um, yeah, that's required if you're using an iOS device uh, because Apple wants to, to make sure everyone is doing, uh, everyone is doing uh, HTTPS correctly. Uh, so if you wanted to use HTTP, you actually have to go and uh, change a project setting to allow 
unsafe or unsecure uh, URL schemes. Uh, so that's that's not cool. Um, let's just use HTTPS since we have it available. Uh, so this is going to grab. Uh, this is going to say uh, to grab the token from brent.ngrok.io slash token.php. Uh, and then we have a bunch of these video SDK components. So these are what came in from that uh, Twilio Conversations client and Twilio Common libraries that we brought in. Uh, we have an access manager, uh, which manages access. Uh, yeah, so access manager uh, manages access. That's great. Conversations client. This is what uh, the client that we'll, we will use to create video conversations. Uh, local media is going to manage our local audio and video. Uh, camera capture is a is a class that um, sort of manages the camera feed uh, and can switch, as we'll see later, can switch between the two cameras on the device. Uh, TWC conversation. This represents the video, the ongoing video chat that we have. Um, an invite uh, we saw in the browser. That's me requesting it that I want to talk to somebody and outgoing um, is, is one that I send, incoming is one that's coming in. Uh, and then we have an alert controller to show uh, pop-ups. Then we get to the point where we have our outlets for the objects that were created in the view controller. So we have that remote media view. This is the remote participants uh, video. We have the local media view. That was the little gray box in the bottom left. That's our video view. Then there's the identity label. That's the thing that we're going to replace eventually. And there's the hang up button, uh, which is to uh, end the call. Uh, so what happens when the view loads? Uh, what happens when the view loads is we make an HTTP request using get out to the token URL. Uh, so we make a get request to brent.ngrok.io slash token.php. And when the request completes, uh, we will parse the result. So we grab the data uh, from the result that comes back and we grab that token. Remember that jot that we were talking about how it's pronounced kind of weird. Uh, we grab that jot out of uh, the result uh, and store it in our access token variable. Um, and then, then once we have all of that, we're ready to initialize our conversation client because we have a token and that's all we really needed. We needed that pass to have that video conversation. Uh, so, down in initialize client, uh, we set up the access manager using the token that we just got back, and we create a conversations client using that access manager. And then we tell the client to listen. So the client is going to listen uh, for incoming invites. It's also able to send outgoing, inv or outgoing invites to other people, uh, but it's going to sit here and listen for new ones that come in. Then we set up our local media. So grab, uh, create a new local media object, uh, and take the camera, uh, the default camera, and add that camera track to local media. Um, and then there's some there's some checks here for if it's simulator. Um, we don't need to worry about that. We're going to run on device. Uh, so that's cool. And then down here we get one more line that sets the identity label uh, text to uh, the client's identity. <clears throat> So that's basically all that is needed to get the thing up and running. There's some code down here that runs when um, when different things happen. So when the, the video uh, dimensions change, we can update the UI. Uh, we have some code down here for when, uh, when an invite comes in, we're just going to connect. We're just going to accept with our local media. And then down here, there's some things for when participants join and leave the conversation and when the conversation ends. Uh, that's... That's pretty much it uh, for that. Um, so let's see what it looks like when we run it. And then we'll make some changes to it. So it's building. This is really building for the first time. So it's got to build and index a bunch of different things. Once my phone launches over to the application, I'll run the application. Or I'll switch to QuickTime so you can see what it looks like. And then we will uh, send an invite to the phone to see video working in our iOS application. All right, here is our video application running. And we'll hop over to Firefox uh, to brent.ngrok.io. Uh, and I noticed we are Mushy Emmett Warsaw. I want to get these both on screen, so let's... 
let's chunk this over uh, like that. Mushy, let's, can we zoom this out a little bit? Yeah, mushy Emmett Warsaw. I'll send the invite. I'll share the correct camera uh, with no audio. Share. Automatically it's gonna start working, connecting to the iOS device. So that is a that is a browser to iOS call. So truly illustrating the cross-platform nature of uh, of this solution, this particular solution. We lost connection to the phone because this cable is terrible, but you saw that working there. Um, we saw way, 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 way too many of me again. Um, that's cool. Uh, so what we want to do, oh good, we lost Xcode too. Um, so I lost connection because I've got a, it's not the cable, it's actually the connector on this uh, 6 Plus is not great. So it kind of drops cables like crazy. Uh, let's rerun that and see that working again before we move on. We are going to um, we're going to be changing that UI up a bit though. Um, I don't like that hang up button. I don't like that label in the lower left where it is. Um, there's a variety of things that we can improve. Uh, but I'll show you I'll show you what this looks like again. This is nasty, and it's uh, gun sight. Connect. FaceTime, no audio. Uh, I'll get this connected back up again. And I'll try to be a little bit more careful about my lightning cable. Uh, but you can see, you can see me. And you can see the the green screen again. The illusion is gone. Uh, but you can see me talking to me. That's interesting. Uh, wouldn't it be great if that hang up button had an image? Wouldn't it also be great if I could switch cameras uh, so that you could see? You know, maybe the wall or the tankard of water where it's sitting right now. Uh, wouldn't it be also cool if we had the option to uh, mute the camera if we were in a noisy room? Uh, I agree. Those are all awesome things. Let's do all of those things. Uh, first, I'll just hit this hang up button so that we can see that it's working. It totally works. Uh, we'll stop the application in Xcode and begin adding some features. Uh, let's see. How much time do we have? Uh, we got a lot of time. Let's let's kind of let's start with the um, hang up button and see how long it takes uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to change this hang up button uh, to be an image uh, and for that we're going to need an image and our images get specified in what's called an assets catalog so we can click on the assets catalog uh, and this basically holds a bunch of uh, this holds a bunch of different a bunch of different images that you can use in your application. Uh, what we'll do here is we want to create uh, we want to create a new image set. And we'll call it uh, Hang Up. And I already have uh, a bunch of images pre-done, uh, and we'll use those. We'll use one that I have already created uh, for Hang Up, and then we might take a look at how uh, we would create a new one. Uh, but I just dragged this hangup.png up into the 3x spot. Uh, and then we now have access to uh, a button that looks like a hangup icon uh, as, we, as we roll into the rest of this uh, configuration. So we can go back to the storyboard. <clears throat> and what we'll do is the first thing we want to do is go to size. And we'll see that this button has a size of 61 um, width and 30 height. I'm going to change this to 60 by 60 so we get a square. <clears throat> 60 by 60 square uh, and then I am going to uh, do our control our handy dandy control drag over to the center uh, the center up here and say that I want this to be centered uh, you know what this is this is a trick this is a trick so when I control drag from the button uh, into the screen I'm actually, you can see it here, I'm actually hovering over remote media. Uh, the relationship here though is to the view. I don't want to create this constraint to remote media. I want to create this constraint to the view. Uh, so you can actually drag this into the scene, and which is what I'm going to do, and create that constraint based on the container. Uh, and I'm going to say center horizontally in the container. Uh, and obviously we need to now do some resolve stuff. Um, what is conflicting? So this this is telling me that we've got a, a conflicting 
thing. Uh, and it's because of this trailing space. We'll get rid of that. Uh, and now we should be able to center that button though. So what we had was we had a constraint that was saying center it in the container. And we had a constraint that said keep it um, X amount of pixels from the edge. It was eight pixels from the edge. So that's not, that's not what we wanted. We wanted it just to be centered. So we had to remove a constraint uh, so that we didn't have a conflict. But now we've got one that says center it. We've got one that says make it 60 by 60. Uh, and then we've got one that says keep it eight from the bottom. That's great. That's what we want. Uh, one last thing to do with our hang up button is instead of text, so we remove the we remove the text, uh, so now it's empty, uh, and we set the image uh, to hang up, and it'll auto complete for you. Now that's way too big, obviously, um, but we can resize that by saying update frames and see what it should look like for real. So now we've taken that boring old um, hang up button that was chucked off to the bottom right, and we've spruced it up. Uh, by creating a visual representation of the hangup button. So that's cool. That's, that's exactly what we wanted from the hangup button. Let's give this another run and see what that looks like in action. <clears throat> when you remove text from a button like that, does that make it worse for accessibility? Um, no, and I'll show you why in a second. It does, it does by default, um, yes. Uh, but I'll show you how we can get around that. Uh, where is my QuickTime view? Lost it. New movie. I must have closed it. Lost connection. Oh, lost connection. Okay. That's the problem. Uh, done. File. New movie recording. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how you can, how you can, um, how you can deal with that. There we go. Um, video quick start. I'll rerun it. There we go. Now we got our nice uh, stylized hangup button. Let's get this sized better. Um, we can test that it is still working uh, without having to make a video connection because there's some debug te text that gets printed out uh, to the to the terminal, to the console log uh, that we can see down here. If I pull this up, right here in this yellow window down below, when I tap on the hang up button it should say disconnect and it does so we've we've made the button we've made the button look cool and it also still works so that's cool uh, we haven't killed any functionality all we did was make visual changes um, awesome uh, that's cool uh, Phil wants to know about the accessibility uh, the accessibility we can still do I'm trying to remember if there's a way to specify it in Xcode, I believe there is. Um, let me look for that for a second. I think it's in attributes uh, on a button. Oh, we're zoomed out. Here we go. Click on the button. There is a property. There's a property on all controls that you can set uh, that determines the accessibility. Here it is. Accessibility. So on the uh, the inspector is called the identity inspector. This is the one where you can give a custom class name. Uh, if you scroll down, you can turn on accessibility, and you can give this a label. So I can say that this is the hang up button, and I can provide a hint uh, that says, you know, uh, this is a button uh, you tap to end a call. Since the visuals might be super important on that, um, I think that's what these are intended for. Let me try hovering to see if it gives me um, any more indication of what I'm supposed to put here. But I think that's it. I think the label is the first thing that'll get read. So the way the accessibility system works in iOS, um, it's kind of like a screen reader that, that works by just iterating through the controls by like hovering over them. And um, what'll happen is, is that, uh, the, the person will get to that button and um, it'll say that's the hang up button. And if that's not enough, they can move to the hint that'll say, you know, what the button is supposed to do. Um, since the visual context clues um, are not there, uh, you would need that to, to sort of do that. Uh, but yeah, that's how you do the accessibility. It's right in this accessibility section. Uh, you set the label and you set the hint. Um, and you could do that for all the controls. Like you can absolutely do that for all the controls. 
so that's that's our hangout button. That's working now. Uh, let's deal with this uh, logging in. Let's deal with this logging in label. I don't want this logging in label to be down here anymore. I don't like it. It's going to end up kind of covering the video in ways that I don't like. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of it for now. Uh, and where I'm going to move the functionality is up to this nav bar. Uh, and what I, where I'm going to put it is in the prompt. So the prompt is going to show up above the, the title label. And I'm just going to say logging in like that. Uh, and that'll give us a nice little nice little indication of what's going on up in the navbar prompt. But we have created a whole host of issues down here. Uh, this button, or th not this button, this uh, media view, uh, its vertical position was based on that label below. Uh, so we can drag down to the bottom and say bottom space to container. Um, and we'll set that to... Uh, bottom space to super view is equal to eight. Uh, and then we'll click this guy and say update frames. Uh, that's not right. We want bottom space. We basically want this down at eight like that. Uh, so what is causing it to not be at eight? Uh, bottom space to... Bottom space to container should be eight. I don't know why that's not, it's not resolving to the correct location. Um, I am going to make that constraint here. No, that should be right. I don't know why it's chucked up like that. Update frames. No, it's, it's putting it at 30. So there's another constraint that's driving that. Um, let's see. Uh, the remote media is not okay. The remote media is not where it should be. That's the problem. So if we update, we need to update all frames. That's what's causing our view. Um, update all frames, and then our remote. Okay, there we go. So it wasn't that the it wasn't that the bottom gray box uh, wasn't in the right place. Uh, it's actually that the remote media view was not where it was supposed to be, uh, according to Xcode. Uh, that's cool. So we now have that positioned where it should be. Uh, but we need to deal with something in here. We've deleted this uh, identity label from the UI, so we should get rid of its property here. Uh, but that's immediately going to cause a problem because, lo and behold, uh, we're using that here to set that identity label when the person logs in. So let's temporarily comment that out. And what we want to do is we want to set the navigation items uh, prompt to self.client.identity. Uh, the problem with this doing it just directly like this uh, is that it won't it won't exactly um, won't exactly do what I want it to do. What I want it to do is say uh, logged in as just as an improvement. We'll use some string interpolation uh, to put this identity. Uh, inside of a string that says logged in as self.client.identity. Uh, we're going to run into one more problem here. Uh, that looks great. Uh, that seems like it would be exactly what we want. Uh, but if I run the application, you'll see that we do have a problem. Um, and I'll, I'll walk through what that problem is in a second, and then we'll get around it. Uh, this looks like exactly the code that I want, but it turns out that now we have logged in as optional uh, you'll see it, optional, wicked Victoria, Victoria Indianapolis. Uh, so we don't want logged in as optional. Uh, what's happening is the string interpolation is just grabbing uh, the literal uh, the literal value of what this is. I think even if I unwrap it right here, um, it's still, still think that doesn't work. Uh, we're going to have to unwrap it a different way. So even if we assume we know that there's going to be an identity, it's still going to say optional. So let's get around this a different way. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use optional binding. So we know this isn't going to work, so let's get rid of that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say if let username uh, equals uh, self.client.identity. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. 
Uh, so what we're doing is we're doing something called uh, optional, uh, optional binding. So we're checking to see that this right here, this value, this optional value, we know it's optional because it's got a question mark here. Uh, we're checking to see if it has a value. And if it does have a value, then username will get assigned uh, to the value that's in identity. Uh, and then now we have access to username is Swift. Swift is great. Uh, yeah, there's some weird stuff in here. Um, I don't know why it still doesn't unwrap correctly there um, inside of the string interpolation. It just doesn't. I've tried it a few times. just never seems to work. So we do it this way. Uh, we'll do self.navigationitem.prompt uh, is equal to username. Uh, and that should work because now we've checked for this optional. We've unwrapped it as a string. We've put it into uh, username and then we're using it to set the prompt. So if I run that and we'll hop back over to QuickTime as soon as my app decides to launch on the phone. We get... Oh, you know what? I didn't do the interpolation. You know what? What's really funny about that is I did that. I made that same mistake uh, yesterday on stream. Uh, the exact same mistake. I didn't do the string interpolation. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, logged in as... Uh, uh, uh. Like that. Yeah, Phil, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, now, the string interpolation in Swift is weird. It's this slash thing. Uh, yeah, so now that should do it. Uh, let's do logged in. Yeah, we won't put a colon. That's cool. <laughs> Phil, Phil, just wants, Phil just wants everything to be JavaScript. There we go, logged in as Jolton Hanna Tulsa. So we've resolved uh, one more thing. So we moved what used to be a label in the lower left up to a thing at the top. Uh, so one more, one more UI thing squashed. Uh, so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is I don't like, I don't particularly like this, uh, don't particularly like this color scheme uh, with the, the red bar. Uh, red has a variety of problems Oh yeah, JavaScript would be dollar, huh? Well, it's mustachey stuff. Uh, so, what do we want to do now? I don't like the I don't like the red, and it turns out that the red is actually coming from uh, the red is coming from code. So we know for for starters we need to get rid of that particular code. Um, I want to see if there is a way to change the tint. I don't think there's a way to change the tint in here. So we'll go back to code and make that change. Um, I'm just going to set it back to the default uh, white headers. Uh, where is that code? So we're looking for tint. There it is. Bar tint color. Uh, and I am just actually going to delete all of this. I don't want to style the navbar elements. If we wanted to style them, we would do them a different way. We would go into Sketch and create an actually good-looking um, design for that top bar, and then do it. Um, I don't think we're. It's kind of outside the scope for today, uh, but we'll 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 deal we'll deal with just white. So let's let's see what that change looks like before we move on. Again, I like to do incremental improvements, make sure everything is still working at various steps. All right, let's see let's see how this looks in context. Now we're back to the. We're back to the default uh, UI for iOS. Uh, we can make this a little bit bigger. Uh, and we are logged in as, let me do a refresh. We are logged in as old school, old school, old school Owen Gunsight. And we'll send an invite, FaceTime, no audio, uh, and we'll connect. We'll see what this looks like. All right, cool. Everything's still working. Um, everything's still working awesomely. My red shirt is uh, causing problems for being able to see that hang up button. But uh, other than that, we're good. Uh, but yeah, everything's working. We're making some changes to the UI. Um, you're seeing the magic of the green screen behind me. Uh, but we need to do something else now. What if I wanted to show you uh, what's on the other side of my phone uh, out of the back camera? It would be pretty cool uh, if we could do that. 
turns out that that's really easy to do with Twilio Video. Uh, one of my favorite things about Twilio Video is how easy it makes common tasks. Uh, so for this task, uh, we're going to need another button. So let's uh, add another asset to our assets collection. Uh, we'll call this one uh, switch camera. Like that. Uh, and then we'll grab another image out of this folder. This one's going to be the switch camera PNG, uh, which looks like a camera with little arrows underneath it, which is cool. Uh, and then we go back to our storyboard and we're going to create another button. Now I'm going to do this precariously like I did yesterday. I'm going to copy and paste this button. So copy, paste, uh, and then I'm going to make sure I have that button selected. And then I'm going to move it. I'm going to see if I can move it uh, without causing issues here. I want to move it to sort of where I want it a little bit before I start to make constraints. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of place it close to where I want it so that I can make the constraints reliably. Uh, again, we need to specify visually where uh, our project should place this button. Do that with control dragging to the center. I'm going to say, oh, not to the center. Again, got to be careful. I want to drag this to the view because it is not inside of remote media, which is what this drag would do. I'm going to drag to view and say center, not center horizontally. Uh, no, we want the bottom, the bottom of this. Uh, bottom spacing, vertical spacing, vertical spacing to bottom layout guide. Uh, I want that constraint. And then I also want a horizontal constraint to this button. So horizontal spacing. Uh, and then we can check in the size inspector to make sure that they're what we want. I don't want 15. I actually want eight. Uh, and I want eight from the bottom. So we're good. Uh, the only thing that we're sort of, there's two things that are still wrong. One, the image is wrong. So we'll change that. The image should be uh, switch camera. Hey, thanks for the follow, Mr. Cheap Zero. Insta followed. Man, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna switch. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so uh, we're gonna switch the, uh, we're gonna change the image to switch camera. Uh, that's step number one. Step number two, uh, the biggest problem right now that we have is that uh, we copied and pasted the hang up button. So we kind of have a problem. That means we also copied and pasted the action that would fired when it's tapped, which means it's going to hang up the call. That's not what we want. So if we right click on the button, uh, we right click on the button, we can scroll down to where there's... Uh, oh, hey, th thanks for the follow, Creative Drew. Uh we scroll down to uh, where touch up inside is and we see that it's calling the uh, video UI. That's a problem. So we'll kill that. Uh, and now uh, we have the option to make this run the code that we actually want it to do, which is to switch the camera. Uh, and we'll do that by heading back to our favorite assistant editor. Uh, and we'll hide some things so that on this resolution we can actually see what's going on. Uh, we want to create an action for our switch camera button and we'll do that by scrolling down to where the hang up button is. So this is the hang up action that we had before. Uh, that one just calls disconnect on the conversation. Uh, so that's this guy. We can see that they're connected because if I hover over that, it highlights the hang up button over in the view. Uh, now we want to create an action for this switch camera button. Uh, we will drag out from here over to underneath hangup and we will create an action this time and we will call this action switch camera. So what we're doing uh, for those that have recently joined, uh, those that have recently joined, we are currently uh, in the process of uh, working on a video application uh, that we are making conversations between my iPhone and my Firefox browser. And uh, right now we're, we're dealing with, uh, we're basically dealing with now switching the camera. So you can see what's going on on the rear camera, not just the front camera. Uh, and we're gonna do that inside of this function right here. Now I mentioned earlier, uh, since we're using Twilio video for this, uh, we have a lot of convenience classes that make things easy. Uh, the one that we're looking to work with right now is this camera. Uh, we want to manipulate the camera capture to show uh, not just that front camera, but also, but also the rear camera. Uh, and if we head down to, uh, if we head down 
to this switch camera, we're actually gonna use that camera now to flip from that front camera to the back camera. Uh, so self.camera. Uh, and let's just take a look at this. Before we do this, I wanna show you how you can explore classes that you don't uh, know the details of. So if I come up to this TWC camera capture and I hold down option, so I hold down the option key uh, and I click when I see that question mark, uh, I'll get a little pop over uh, and that's gonna allow me to click on the camera capture .h. So this is the actual uh, header file from the Objective C uh, class that this camera capture comes from. Now we're not doing any Objective C here. You can learn about Objective C in a different stream or on a different video. I highly recommend Code School for that. Uh, but this is a set uh, of the camera that's uh, that set, sets the camera uh, that's being shared. So we know that it has a front camera and a back camera. It has a preview view. We've, we've dealt with these things before. Um, but what we're looking for is a method, and here it is. Here's the method right here called flip camera. So it flips the camera's capture source. That means uh, that this is really super, super duper simple to do. All we need to do uh, inside of our switch camera method is to call uh, self.camera dot flip camera. That's it. It is one line of code to switch from the front camera to the back camera. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, so if we run this now on my phone, uh, we'll make a we'll make a call again. So that's dead simple to do. Let's uh, let's call up the browser again, and we will run this application on my iPhone. And as soon as my iPhone's ready, we'll switch over to that. Here it comes. All right. So we have our iPhone, we're logged in as Vivacious Mufasa Berlin, uh, and if we go into here and make a connection to, uh, wow, that's a hard one to type, Vivacious with one hand, uh, Mufasa uh, Berlin, and I'm holding on to my iPhone for dear life. And if we send the invite, uh, pick the right camera and hit share selected devices in Firefox, you are going to see a lot of me. Um, there we go. Whole bunch. Uh, me, 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 me. Um, whole bunch of me over there. Uh, and then I hit switch camera. My camera feed is not great right now. There we go. Uh, you can see the, the aforementioned tankard of water uh, that I am consuming water from. And now we can create even more me as I point the back camera at the conversation that's going on. Uh, so that's cool. Um, that is how you very quickly can flip camera from <clears throat> can very quickly flip camera from front to back. Uh, that's cool. Uh, that's that's one of the the easier tweaks uh, you can make. Uh, one more thing that we can do uh, right quick is uh, imagine you're in a noisy room. You're having a video conversation. You need to tune in to uh, say a meeting that's going on or something like that. Uh, but you don't want to necessarily send all of your audio over. It would be really cool if we could mute uh, mute our audio. Uh, and the way we can do that, uh, and first things first, I want to show you uh, something that can help you after this uh, stream is over. Hey, thanks for the follow, Katmu Tarragon. Uh, when this stream is over, if you are so inclined to want to work back through what we've been talking about, <clears throat> uh, I wrote a blog post that walks through uh, everything that we're doing here, uh, and that that will show you all the features that we've been implementing so far, uh, including uh, including all of the button uh, all of the button images are available for you in there. Uh, all the steps for how to access them, all the steps for how to add them to the view, uh, how to flip the camera, and now how to mute are all described uh, all described in that blog post. Uh, so we are now going to create uh, one more button. Uh, and that button, like I said, that button is going to uh, control our audio. It's going to mute us uh, because we don't always want to be heard. Um, so we'll create one more button. Uh, let's head back to just a single view and give our inspectors a chance to shine. Uh, what we're going to do is copy and paste again. 
And I don't think I actually had that. Copy, paste. Right. Uh, and then select the button. I want this one to be the l to the left of hang up. I'm, I'm shifting this with the arrows because... Um, I'm shifting this with the arrows because if I were to drag... Um, if I were to drag it, uh, we would have the problem of it being placed inside of remote view. If I take a look here, uh, we have this remote media that is taking up the entire screen. I don't want that button to be inside of there. Uh, so if I were to drag, it would actually drop it inside of that view. I don't want that. So I was just moving it with the arrow keys. I'm going to control drag from the button to the view, uh, the main view, and say that I want the vertical spacing to bottom layout guide to be consistent. Uh, and I'm going to set that to 8. It's already set to 8. Uh, and then I am going to control drag from switch camera uh, over to hang up button and say that I want the horizontal spacing to stay consistent. And I'm going to change that to 8. Uh, so now we've got it set up so that uh, we've got uh, a button to the left and a button to the right. Problem is, it's the, they're both the switch camera image. Uh, so we actually need two images for this one. Uh, we'll hide this scene out again. Uh, we'll go to the assets. <clears throat> uh, and we'll create a new image set. We want one for uh, we want one for mute and we want one for unmute. And if we go to mute, hop over to finder, we can drag this mute.png into the spot. And go to unmute and drag from unmute up to the spot. Uh, and now we have our two images for toggling uh, between mute and unmute. Uh, and then back in our storyboard, uh, by default, we're going to have audio. Um, assuming by default we're going to have audio. Uh, because that's the way our application is set to connect. We're connecting with all local media. Uh, assuming that by default we're going to want to mute, we'll set the image to mute. So now we've got a mute button. We've got a switch camera button. One more thing, again, because we copied and pasted this, uh, we have an action that we don't need. Uh, that's the switch camera action. So we can just simply click the X to get rid of that. Uh, and then we need to create some code uh, for doing the actual muting. So we'll go back to the assistant editor to go back into our view controller. Now we need, we need access to this button because we're going to need to switch uh, between the two different images. So first things first, we need to create an outlet for this button. Um, and I happen to know that we're going to need an outlet for all of these buttons, so I'm going to create them all now. Uh, so we'll create an outlet for the mute button, and we'll create an outlet for the switch camera button. We're going to need these other outlets later, these other buttons later, uh, for a feature that I will leave a secret. Uh, but we're going to need those later, so we'll create them. We have an outlet for that for all three of our buttons. Uh, and then we're going to need to create an action uh, for our mute button. So we drag that out underneath switch camera, set this to action, and change this to toggle mute. So this is going to toggle between uh, mute and unmute. <clears throat> now what we're going to be muting... Uh, the thing that we're going to be muting uh, is the local media's uh, microphone. So we need to use this uh, <clears throat> local media object up above. So again, I'm going to option click, open up this header, uh, and we'll notice there is a property called microphone muted. Um, that's exactly what we want. So uh, we know that local media is optional. So uh, if we scroll back up here, local media, it ends with a question mark, which means it's optional. Uh, it's optional because we might not have connected with our local media at all. We might just be watching someone else broadcast. Uh, so we need to check to make sure that the local media is not nil. We do that again, like we did earlier with an optional binding. So we're checking to see if local media is nil. Uh, if it's not, then we'll set uh, we'll set this local uh, variable to the result of local media. Uh, and then in here, we're just going to do an if check. We're going to say if local dot microphone muted. So this is, um, this is if muted. 
uh, and then we'll have uh, an else for if it's not uh, if not muted All right so this code runs if it's muted uh, this code runs if it's not uh, so if it is muted uh, then we want to um, unmute it so we'll set this to false uh, and then uh, we want to set the mute buttons image so we'll do set image and uh, in here we're going to do uh, UI image we're going to use the UI image constructor uh, for getting an image with a specific name uh, and the name that we're going to give that is mute so since we're toggling it uh, to be unmuted we want the button to change back to the mute image uh, and this is just for the normal state uh, and then um, so it's good that we we saw earlier we saw a set title, uh, we saw yeah we saw we saw this toggling earlier didn't we Phil? Uh, so yes we are we are now circling back uh, full circle to to what we did earlier today um, earlier in this stream which was toggling a button. So this time instead of toggling uh, the title for the button we're actually toggling the image for the button and I mentioned that that might happen uh, when we were doing that earlier. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we are not muted, then we want to mute the microphone. So we'll set this to true. Uh, and then we'll set the mute buttons image uh, using the same uh, UI image named. Oops, I didn't type that right. UI image uh, named. And this one's going to be unmute for state normal. Cool. So um, that's, that's all we need to do the um, toggling of mute on the, uh, the feed. Let's see if I can actually, um, actually show this off. If I don't send audio from the, if I don't send audio from Firefox, uh, I shouldn't get nasty feedback. So let's, let's try it. Uh, if we get feedback, I'll cut it real quick. So don't worry. Uh, but I want to see if I can illustrate that the, um, that the mute button's working. Okay, so our application's launching. Um, I'm going to need to type a name, so let me put the phone down for a sec. Uh, Rowdy Roddy Minneapolis. All right, cool. Uh, we'll send the invite. I'll make sure this isn't muted. I'll grab all those things. Uh, we'll send no audio from the browser, and I'll move the microphone down so that we can capture speaker. So I'm talking from the phone. Let's see. Yep. Yep. I'm talking talking from, the from the phone. Kind of kind of hear it. Kind of echoing. echoing. And then, and then if, I, if hit I, mute, I hit mute, we no longer have the echo uh, because the mute button is working. And if I toggle it back, now we get, now the, we echo get the echo again. again. Echo, 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 echo. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, everything, uh, everything is, is working. working. Uh, there's just one problem. Um, I don't necessarily like. I don't necessarily like when uh, buttons get in my way uh, when I'm having a video conversation. And at this point, that's exactly what we have. Um, we have buttons absolutely uh, getting in the way of what we're trying to do. Uh, so I thought it would be neat, uh, perhaps, if we could do a thing where we uh, show the buttons um, and then uh, where when a conversation starts, we show the buttons. Uh, and then they hide uh, so that they get out of the way. Um, and then, so they hide and get out of the way, and that's cool. Uh, and then um, we can tap the screen where the video call is going on uh, to get the buttons to reappear. Sound cool? Um, this, is, this is neat because it's going to let us do UI view animations again like we did earlier in this stream. Uh, if you come back and watch the, uh, the original part of the stream, we will, uh, you'll be able to see how that, how that worked uh, for a text label earlier on in the call. Uh, right now, though, we need to work with these buttons. So we're going to go back up to view did load, uh, and we're going to set some initial properties for these buttons. So uh, the two properties that we need to work with when we want to show and hide things, uh, there is a property called hidden that removes the, uh, change the visibility to completely invisible, and it changes the, uh, 
it changes it so you can't actually tap on the thing. The problem is it happens instantaneously and there's no way to animate it. Uh, we can animate the visibility of a button uh, using the uh, alpha property. So this is the transparency. 1.0 is fully visible. 0.0 .0 is fully transparent. Uh, and that's what we're going to manipulate. So we're going to want the buttons to start out. Um, we're going to want them to start out hidden. So we're going to set all of the buttons to hidden. Uh, so we get self.mute button.hidden equals true. And we've got self.switch camera button. Uh, switch button? Did I call it switch button? That's a problem. Yeah, that's... Okay, we'll, we'll roll with that. We'll call it switch button. Whatever. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that refactoring. That's a pretty stupid name though. Switch what? It's not a switch button. Uh, and then we're gonna set the alpha uh, for each of these. So hang up button dot alpha. Uh, we're gonna set it to zero dot zero so that it's invisible. Uh, this is mute button dot alpha equals zero dot zero. And self, guess you learned swiftly. Oh man, that's a good pun. Uh, switch button dot alpha equals zero dot zero. What is this error? Why is... What what do we have going on? Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing wrong. Stop with the stop sign. I hate when they do that. Uh, okay. Cool. So this is going to start our buttons out as hidden and invisible. Um, those are not the same thing. We can have a button that's invisible but not hidden. We can have a button that's hidden that still has alpha of 1. Um, but uh, we have both in this case. Now we're going to need to add a couple of functions. We're going to want one uh, that shows the buttons since they're hidden. Uh, we're going to have a function called show buttons. Uh, and then we're going to have also a function called hide buttons that'll do the reciprocal. Uh, and in show buttons, the first thing we want to do uh, is we want to unhide them. So we'll grab these properties up here and uh, we will unhide them, so these will be false. Cool. Uh, and then we want to use our friend uh, UI view animate with duration. Uh, so UI view dot animate with duration. Uh, we'll do 0 0.7 for a nice subtle fade out. Uh, and then we will... Uh, how do we want to do this? We don't really need... We don't really need all this junk, so we'll do over 0 0.7. Uh, we want a block. It won't take any parameters and it won't return anything. Uh, and then we'll close that off. So inside of this block right here, uh, this block that takes no parameters and returns nothing, uh, this is where we put our animations. And what we want to have UI view, um, this is core animation, by the way. Uh, if you've heard the term core animation, that is what we're using right now. Uh, core animation will animate anything that is in this block that it can animate over 0 0.7 seconds. And we, what we want it to do uh, is to animate these alphas back to 1.0. Uh, mute button. I did those in the wrong order because I didn't copy and paste. That's okay. Uh, it won't really matter. Uh, so now we have show buttons, uh, which will show them. Uh, so it unhides them and then changes their alpha. We need to do the opposite effect inside of hide buttons. Uh, and to do the opposite effect, we're going to use the completion handler uh, for the animate with duration. So the way that looks uh, is UI view animate with duration. Still want our 0 0.7 duration. Uh, and then I'm just going to double click on this guy to get the block for our animation code. Um, this is going to set the alphas back to 0, 0.0. So I'll come back here and change these to 0, 0.0. And then our completion block is where we'll set, uh, we will set hidden uh, back to true for all of our buttons. So we'll come back up here uh, and grab these just for some efficiency and paste those in. Uh, so we now have a, a function that'll show the buttons. We have a function that'll hide the buttons. Uh, all of them showing and hiding with a nice subtle fade. Uh, that's cool. That's great. Um, so when are we going to do that? Uh, when should we do that? Well, I mentioned that we wanted to uh, we wanted to show and hide them. 
a pun count for the stream. Uh, we wanted to, uh, I should just add a pun count. Uh, I should just add a pun count uh, command that would work. Uh, so if we do, um, if we do this on uh, conversation connected, so that it'll be uh, conversations client uh, did receive invite. So in this did receive invite function down here, this is inside of the Twilio conversations client delegate. What is a delegate? I heard somebody or saw somebody mention delegates earlier in chat. Um, a delegate is sort of like your teammate, uh, your object's teammate, and it it's another object that you can ask questions of, essentially. You can say, hey, um, I have a thing that I need to do. Can you do it for me? Just like delegating in real life. In this case, we're saying that the view controller can act as our conversations client's delegate. And when it needs to do something, it could just go ask. And in this case, it's gonna say, uh, when it receives an invite, it's gonna ask view controller uh, what to do. It's gonna say, hey, I got an invite, go do the work. Uh, and the work that it's gonna do uh, is it's going to accept the invite automatically. So we're not showing a prompt, that would be a nice UI improvement we could do. We could show a prompt that says, incoming invite from, you know, Tadri, whatever, whatever. I mean, these really long names. Um, yeah, so uh, it's gonna automatically accept it. Uh, it's gonna set the conversation up and it's gonna set its conversation delegate to itself. So that's cool. Uh, so there's also a conversations delegate down below. Um, what we can do here is when that, in this accept block, when we've got this accept happening, uh, we can call uh, self.showButtons, right? Uh, so this will at least let us see if the button is being shown correctly. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about how we might hide it after a short delay. Uh, if you're a veteran of this stream, you might know how we're going to do that with a timer because uh, we did it with confetti in the past. Uh, but if you're, if you're new to the stream, uh, we are going to end up using another cocoa pod that we'll grab in a second. Okay, so if I hop over to Firefox, let's do a little refresh just to make sure everything's sane. We'll do sneaky Cameron Essex, and we'll send that invite, uh, and we'll connect up. And if you watch the iPhone app, the buttons appeared. They subtly faded in, and we now have uh, buttons to interact with. They all still work. We can switch the camera. We can mute the stream. Uh, and we can hang up. So that's cool. Uh, everything's cool. Everything's still working. Uh, we're good to go. Uh, but the problem is we said that we wanted to hide the buttons. So we wanted to show the buttons. Uh, and then after a little bit of a delay, hide them so that they get out of the way. So that we can have a nice conversation without buttons. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a CocoaPod called Swifty Timer. Now there is a class in Swift uh, inside of, I believe it's foundation. Uh, basically, uh, Swifty Timer will allow us to have a nicer API over NS Timer. It makes things really easy to work with. We can do things like NS Timer after a certain time period. And we also have um, different things off of number. It's sort of Ruby on Rails like, so we can say after four seconds, run some code. Uh, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to pod install. Uh, we come back over here to the pod file. Uh, we're gonna need a few things. We need to change the source uh, back to the default. So let's do that real quick. Um, we need uh, to say use frameworks. So use frameworks. This is gonna set up our pods as modules, which means we can import them without having headers. Uh, and then we will set a source to grab pods from, uh, which is going to be uh, github.com cocoapods slash specs.git. This is the default repo uh, for pods. Uh, up here, we're using the Twilio repo for the Twilio stuff. Uh, and then we're gonna grab uh, Swifty timer from that uh, that spec repo. Uh, and if we head back over to our terminal and say pod install, uh, that'll go out and fetch Swifty timer for us. It might take a second uh, because we've added a new source, uh, but it should be it should be good to go. Um, it'll pull in Swifty timer. Cool. Uh, Swifty timer we now have access to. 
we'll go back into our source folder and head to viewcontroller.swift <clears throat> and go up to the top and import Swifty Timer. It's going to say it doesn't know what Swifty Timer is because I haven't built the project, but that's easy enough to solve. We'll just build the project. <clears throat> this little stop sign is wrong. <laughs> it's gone. Okay, uh, back to did receive invite. Uh, we can now do our delay. So what we want to do here is we're going to load up. Uh, we're going to load up the view. Uh, we're going to connect this call. We're going to show the buttons. They're going to subtly fade in, uh, and then we're going to set up a timer. So we're going to say NS timer after uh, four seconds. Four dot seconds. Uh, we want to run some code. So double click that. Uh, and what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to hide the buttons. So self dot hide buttons. Um, that's awesome. So if I run again, uh, and we know that we're going to need to make a new connection. If I run it again and switch over, we'll get a new username. And this one is going to be Daft Hannah Oakland. We'll make that connection, send the invite over. We connect up, the buttons show, and then four seconds later, they hide. But now they're gone forever. Oh no, we don't have any buttons anymore. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, that's the next problem we need to resolve. Um, how do we get them back? Well, the way I want to get them back uh, in the application is I want to, I want to tap on the video screen. Uh, and when I tap on the video screen, it should show them. And then after a delay, it should hide them. Uh, much the same way that we've been uh, doing the show hide before. Uh, this time, we're just going to do it inside of the tap on the screen. So I'm going to create inside of uh, view did load. I'm going to set up a function called uh, set up uh, video tap. Yes, touch the video and they reappear. Fade in, fade out. Uh, set up video tap recognizer. Uh, and that function is going to look like this. Uh, funk setup set up video uh, tap recognizer. And what we're going to do in here uh, is create a gesture recognizer for a tap. So let tap equal UI tap gesture recognizer. Uh, and this uses target action. So target is a class uh, that a method will get called on. And the action is the method that gets called. Uh, so target is self. We're going to create that uh, method in here. Uh, and we are going to call this, uh, we're going to call this selector uh, remote media tapped. Cool. So that's our tap recognizer. Um, we will attach that. Uh, to the remote media view. Uh, so we add tap to that. And then we also want to set the remote media views uh, user interaction enabled to true. This means that the remote media view can accept taps. Otherwise it wouldn't and that gesture recognizer would never run. Uh, now we need the remote uh, media view tapped function that we set as the action. Uh, and in here, we want to show the buttons. Let's do self.show buttons. And then we'll do our NS timer again. So NS timer uh, dot after. Now, as a usability tweak, um, instead of four seconds, I'm going to make this six seconds because I suspect that when the user uh, taps on this button, they're actually going to want to interact with the buttons. So if I were to hide them in the same amount of time, it would feel like I was doing the user a disservice. This gives them just a couple more seconds to interact with the buttons before they hide. Uh, and then they're going to hide with our hide buttons function. So that's it. Uh, that's all we need for this functionality. Now we have the ability to show them when the conversation launches. We uh, hide them when the conversation uh, after four seconds. Uh, and then we'll tap and show. Yeah, I could make that I could make that a function too that I could call with the duration. There's all kinds of refactory fun things we could do. Um, yeah, I'll um, I'll do that in a second. Let's let's see it working. All right. 
so the video is launching, the application is launching. Uh, we'll head back over to Firefox, get a nice refresh. We will send a invite to Nasty Ulysses Oakland. And we'll accept and run that. Uh, buttons show, buttons hide. And then when I tap the video, oh no, we got a bug. We got a bug, don't we? What do we do? Uh, terminating with nil. Debug it, make it work. Um, remote media tapped, unrecognized selector sent to instance. Ah, okay. Um, let's see what we did. Did I have a typo? I bet I did. Remote media tapped. Uh huh. Yeah, so that's the problem with this uh, selector syntax. Uh, this selector syntax takes a string, so it is not strongly typed, which means you make mistakes like that. Uh, thankfully, I believe it is Swift 2.2 that is coming out soon. Uh, it fixes this by giving us uh, strongly typed selectors. Uh, so, yay language evolution. Um, so anyways, we messed that up. Let's try it again. It's cool. We can fix it. We did fix it. We just got to verify that we fixed it. Uh, we're running again. We are now unique. Oh, very unique. Uh, Gracie Kukamonga. Excellent. Uh, share the devices. Connect everything up. We're good. Buttons show. Buttons hide. And when we tap, I really hope we get buttons this time. Yeah, we got buttons. And then they're going to stay for six seconds and then they're going to fade back out we can tap and make sure that the buttons are still working i can switch the camera i can mute and i can hang up cool so everything is working as expected uh, everything is working as expected for that that feature so we're good let's do that refactor um, that phil wanted um, so we have this ns timer hide after a certain duration um, i am suspecting that this is going to pass an ns time interval which it does so we need to create a um a function that is called what do we want to do um hide hide after delay let's call it hide after delay um hide after delay uh and this is going to take a duration which is an ns time interval uh, and inside of here, we're going to call nstimer.after uh, duration. Oh, i got to pass the block, though. Um, hmm. I can do that. Um, let's do that. This is going to also take a... Uh, 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 this is going to take a block... Uh, we'll call this, um, hide after delay. No, actually we can just do the hide here. If we wanted to get super generic, we could do, um, we could do an execute after delay and we could pass in the block. Uh, but since we know what we're going to run here, it's fine. Um, we can contemplate if we have time to do that. So what, what I was talking about here is, um, since we know we're going to hide the buttons, we don't really have to pass in anything other than duration um, I can come back here and say um, self dot hide after delay uh, and inside of here I can say six dot seconds and I could go find the other one which is four dot seconds uh, and I can replace this one with self dot hide after delay uh, four dot seconds right and that's a nice little refactor um, Oh, cool. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Catmoo Tarragon. Uh, thanks for the follow. Uh, you'll get a... You can sign up for a notification to know when I stream, uh, but I always stream the Wednesday slot, this this slot, every Wednesday. Um, I am going to start cropping up a lot more um, during other times, even if it's just for an hour or two. Um, but yeah, thanks for the follow. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you learned something. Uh, so we got a nice little refactor uh, with that hide after delay. Um, there's a lot more we could probably refactor out. Uh, what I was talking about about the block is I think we could do um, funk uh, execute 
uh, execute block after delay, uh, where we could take in a duration that is ns time interval, and a block. No, can't do block because that's reserved. Uh, we'll call it. Oh, thanks, Implete, for the follow. Uh, we'll call this code block. Uh, is that also? Wait. Oh, everything seems <laughs> everything seems to want to be reserved right now. Uh, we'll call this block. I think because I think I can do that. Uh, and that is going to be. Uh, 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 uh. I think that's how I passed that in. So that says that I'm going to take a block that is uh, parameterless and returns nothing. Um, and then what I would want to do here is ns timer uh, dot after uh, duration. Uh, wait, I lost this. Dot after uh, duration. And then uh, we want block here. So actually, I don't think I want to call that block because I think that's that's too much of a conflict with what it's actually called. So we'll say execute code block. Uh, presumably, this is how NS timer is written too. Yeah, p uh, possibly. Um, I'm not sure what the internals. I'm not sure what the internals look like there. Um, but yeah, it's probably it's probably super similar uh, to what what's going on there. Um, so I think what we could do here. Um, I think what we could do here is call. Um, let's try it. We'll, we'll copy, we'll comment this one out, um, and we'll see if we can do self.execute block after delay. Um, and we'll say that we want this to be six seconds, and then we'll pass in this block, uh, which is self.hide buttons. So this is like a more generic way to do the, what we just refactored. Um, Let's see if it works, though. We'll run it. Um, and the cool thing is, I can actually uh, show this without connecting uh, anywhere, because I think we don't have any checks in there to say if a conversation is going on. So I should be able to just tap and see if it's working. So tap shows them. Six seconds, it should hide them. Otherwise, we might get a fatal crash. Nope, it worked. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty solid refactor right there. Um, so we have uh, we have a function now that can execute arbitrary code. Um, we can execute arbitrary code just by passing a block into this execute block after delay. Um, we just pass in this arbitrary block that gets passed in as uh, this guy. This is the block notation for uh, parameter lists. If we had parameters, we could say what the type of parameter is inside of here. Uh, we could also specify the return type over here. Uh, but that's that's the basics for how to pass blocks around, uh, and that showed a good way to um, arbitrarily execute some code after a delay. Um, I think that's all of the code functionality. I think there's one more thing we could do. Um, we have a conversation ended right here, where we could say um, self dot hide buttons, just in case they're on screen uh, when the conversation ends. We could we could hide them. Uh, like that. Um, that's all the code. I think since I still have a little bit of time, uh, would anybody be interested to see how the button images were created? Let me know in the chat. Since I since we've been doing some design work here, I could I could uh, humor with some design work uh, inside of an application that I love called Sketch. Well, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Um, while I tool around, uh, but I think I think I'll launch I think I'll launch Sketch. Dutch Bear says yes, so we'll do that. Um, <clears throat> so this is Sketch. Um, yes, I am getting Sketch out. I love Sketch. Sketch is, as many people on this, uh, and many people on my team know, I love this application. Uh, I love the people that built this. I I would buy them dinner and a beer, and. Uh, and tell them how much I love this application if I could. Uh, but this is an application by a company called, I believe it's Bohemian Coding. Yeah, Bohemian Coding. Uh, and it's great, and it's got a really good trial. Um, it's a hundred bucks, but I, I tell you, it's worth it. Um, it's really worth it, and you see like a lot of people use this for really, really, really good design uh, for their mobile applications. Um, 
But like I said, it's not made for designers. It's made for you. Uh, so check this thing out. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use Sketch. Uh, spoiler alert. Here's some of the ones that I was working on before. Uh, we're going to... Uh, let's just hide these. Uh, I can't do that. Let's just create a new one. So we create a new document. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I am going to go out to the noun project. And we're going to create a new button. We're not going to create one of the ones that we already had. We're going to create a new button. <clears throat> and you're going to tell me what that button does. Uh, it can be anything. Um, I was looking earlier. I was looking yesterday and I found like a frying pan. Um, someone in the chat, the first one to let me know what they want me to create a button for. Um, I will find I will find an icon to represent that and create a button out of it. Chances are we'll be able to do it, so be creative. I'll wait just a second while you let your thinking thinking machines do what they do. He wants a confetti button. Confetti button. Confetti. Please. Yes, we can create a confetti button. Phil, I know why you want a confetti button. Phil. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Phil wants me to create an application that shows confetti. I wonder why. Uh, okay. I'm going to look for confetti that looks like it would make for a good button. Um, <clears throat> I want like a variety of confetti. Let's do this one. I think it's got a nice little, nice little variety of uh, different confetti options in it. Um, and the way this works, I'm probably going to have to log into this, is I grab an SVG. So I grab an SVG version of this. Um, I already have an account. Log in with Facebook? Maybe? I think that works. Okay. Uh, so I want to download this as an SVG. Uh, and I'm going to say free and give credit. I could purchase this, um, but I'm going to do free and give credit. Uh, everything on uh, the noun project you can use, uh, but you need to cite that you used something uh, from the noun project if you do. Uh, so I'm going to download this image as an SVG. Um, and it's telling me who it is. So if I were to use this in an actual project, um, I now need to make a reference to Koro Koro. Uh, and that would be that would be the next step. Uh, so if I use that in a project, obviously I would want to give credit. Uh, we don't need to do that for what we're doing, but it would be a great thing to do if you were um, building your own app. Uh, I'm going to draw a circle. Fancy, fancy circle. Uh, and I'm going to make this a, uh, what do we want? 40 by 40. And we'll zoom up nicely into that. Uh, and I am going to... I am going to remove uh, this border temporarily, and I am going to change the fill, not fill, but I'm going to change the fill uh, to the blue that we were working with earlier uh, with our other buttons. And then the next step, oh, I'm also going to give it a shadow. So we'll give this guy the default shadow, um, maybe. We'll, we'll come back to whether we want that or not. But I'll give this guy the default shadow, uh, and... Maybe we'll make it a shade of blue. Nah, I'm going to leave the default shadow. We'll go with that. It's fine. Um, may or may not need that in our application. We could play with that later. Uh, cool. So we've got an SVG. We'll bring the SVG into Sketch. And there it is. Uh, that is our confetti. Uh, we're going to want to resize our confetti, obviously. Um, but you'll notice it's got this. This is another reminder hey, you got this with attribution. Um, please remember that you got this with attribution. What I'm going to do uh, so that I remember that I got this attribution is I'm going to take these and I'm going to move them outside of this group. I'm just going to put them at the top and then I'm going to move them over here. So now they're not part of my button. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go into this group and I'm going to want to select everything here and change the fill not the fill, but the fill, uh, to white. And then I'm going to want to grab all of the, I believe we want this outer path for each of these guys. So holding down command, I will select all of these 
individual outer paths for all the circles and change them to white. That should be what we want. All right, and then I'm gonna grab this group, uh, this group inside of uh, there, and I'm gonna drag that uh, so that it's its own thing out here. I'm gonna kill this outer container. Uh, and actually, let's see, I've got, <clears throat> I've got a group that contains our confetti and contains our oval. That's exactly what I want. I'm gonna rename this to uh, confetti. I'm gonna change this to uh, confetti button, uh, just to give my different groups uh, solid names for when for when we export. Uh, <clears throat> and then we're not working with the right size uh, group here, so we'll just shrink this a bit and then drag it onto the button. So that's cute. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be super obvious what that button's supposed to do, but whatever, it's confetti. Um, so that's our confetti button. Uh, and then what I would wanna do is I would take this entire uh, exportable group here and I will, um, I'll say we want a 3X and I'll name that um, with a 3X suffix in PNG. We'll export that to where are we going to go? Desktop images. Sure. Desktop images, confetti button 3x. Um, we will also export it for 2x. Call this 2x. Export it to the same place. Uh, and then we'll also export it uh, for 1x. With This will be 1x and no suffix. Next stream confetti video. Uh, export confetti button uh, with no suffix. So now we have the three images. So that's how we create those. Uh, and we come into, um, I think I want to kill that, uh, that shadow, to be honest. Where is that? On the oval. I don't want this. Uh, for now, we can do shadows. Uh, if we wanted a shadow on that, we could do it in um, Xcode. Uh, so we've got, I need to actually export that again now that I did that though. Uh, export, confetti button, save, yes, replace it. Uh, 2x with the 2x suffix. Save it, replace it. Uh, 3x with the 3x suffix. And replace that. Uh, and we go back over to Xcode and go to our uh, assets collection. And we can create an image set for uh, confetti button. Phil's favorite. Uh, and we actually have, this time, all three um, images. So we come in here and we will go to the desktop, to the images folder, to confetti button 3x. Oh, we didn't get the oval. I messed up. See that? No oval. Uh, what did I do? Oh, this isn't actually in the group. Lovely. Okay, we want that in the group. Uh, we might need to re... Nope, it's centered. Uh, that's my fault. One more one more export dance. Uh, confetti button 3x, bear with me. I didn't realize that that oval was not in the group. Uh, export, save, replace. What, what this is doing is because it's, um, because it's a vector application, it's uh, actually generating the proper size for... Um, the 1x will be 40 by 40, the 2x will be 80 by 80, and the 3x will be 120 by 120. I think I wanted to base those on 60. Um, so let's make let's make one more change. Uh, I think if I do 60 by 60, everything will resize correctly because again, it's vector based. We're not losing any quality. Uh, we export that. We'll get our 60 by 60 button image. Uh, we do 2x. There is a way to slice these. Um, I could create a slice. Uh, I should have done that at the beginning, then we wouldn't have had this problem. I uh, wouldn't have to keep naming them. Um, but you can create a slice that'll have all of these, that'll do them all by default. Uh, and I do want to do 1x with no suffix to replace confetti button. Uh, we go back over to Xcode, and we go back to confetti button. And we look at these and they should be right. So this one's that size. 
this one's that size, this one's that size. So they're differently sized, I think. I think it did that right. We'll see in a second. So confetti button 3x, confetti button 2x, confetti button 1x. Um, varying sizes. I don't know that those are necessarily as sharp. Um, I don't think they're as sharp as the other ones were. Um, that kind of sucks. Uh, we could go back and tweak that if we wanted to, but I just wanted to show you the basic workflow uh, for what I had done previously. Uh, if I copy and paste one of these buttons, and we move it somewhere else on screen. Um, yeah, the 2x and 3x look like the same size. I wonder if I didn't do this correctly. 3x, 3x, just to be sure. Export. 2x, 2x, replace, back to Xcode, back to assets, uh, look at the image size, yep, that was the problem, so 3x, cool, and that's a sharper, definitely a sharper image, uh, cool, back to main dot storyboard, where we have this uh, 60 by 60 image floating there with the wrong image. Uh, and we want this to be confetti. Hey, we have a really fuzzy confetti button. <laughs> but it's a confetti button nonetheless. Um, obviously, we could we could do some tweaks. Um, I think I think what I had done before is I made these like pretty large, um, well, like 120 by 120. Uh, and if we save that out as the 3x, and let just let um, for now let uh, Xcode handle the scaling. So what I'll do is I'll save the 3x, I'll come back over here to the asset catalog, and I'll delete these ones, and I'll bring in our, our bigger uh, 3x image. And it should be, it's a little sharper, but it's still, it's still not going to be great. Um, there's still a lot of work we could do around making that sharper, but it's pretty good. Um, it's definitely a confetti button. Uh, that's the process. So I go to noun project, I search for something crazy i'm serious there was a frying pan i was here looking for stuff and i this was like frying pan was like one of the things that was showing and there's a ton there's a bunch of kitchen stuff so if you're building a cooking application you've got all that um if you're looking for like charts and things like that uh, it's very easy to to build things for analytics uh, build all your buttons that uh, sort of show you different types of things you can do in a in a charting application but anyways, that is the basis uh, for how I created the buttons for the application. Uh, and as a roundup, just one more time, I wanted to toss your direction at a few blog posts. Uh, if you're interested in doing uh, text-based chat applications, I have this blog post for you. Um, if you are interested in seeing exactly how we built the video chat application in this post, uh, or in this stream, uh, you can go to this blog post uh, that is about everything we talked about here, except you got the bonus of seeing how the images were created. Um, that's all I have for today, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, thank you to those of you who followed. Uh, that's awesome. You'll know when I go live next. Uh, when will I be live next? I'm not exactly sure. So I, the next time I'm scheduled to be live is next week during this time slot. There's a pretty good chance I'm going to stream before then. So uh, stay tuned to your uh, stream notifications if you signed up for them to know when I go live next and we'll do some more iOS programming. Uh, thanks, everyone.